This video is for entertainment and educational purposes only. Hey guys, Paul here today. We are going to talk about dose, compound choice, and duration when it comes to the toxicity of your PED use. This is something that people can't seem to wrap their head around, but I'm going to address it today and hopefully do so in simple terms that you can understand. Before we do so, please take the time to subscribe to my uh, channel. It's the best way you can show your appreciation for all the awesome content I'm putting out there for free, dudes. I'm telling you, I should be charging for this shit. Uh, if you want to get in contact with me about coaching or consultation, you can do so by shooting me an email at bigp3rd at gmail.com. Or you can DM me on Instagram at Paul K. Barnett. My contact information is in the video description below. Uh, if you have questions, comments, you think I'm a moron, you can let me know so in the comment section below. I'll do my best to respond to each and every one of them. And give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Okay, so there's a maxim in... Um, in uh, toxicology that basically says uh, only the dose makes the poison. Uh, dosis sola factic venenum. I, I haven't taken Latin in a long time, so I probably slaughtered that. Uh, uh, but essentially, it's the dose that makes something poisonous. Um, and, uh, you know, in, in, when it, in regards to PEDs, there's really, I think there's three factors that we, we need to consider when it comes to t toxicity of a drug. The dose, the duration, and the compound choice. We can also, if we want to throw a fourth in there, we can also consider uh, an individual tolerance uh, to certain substances. Some people can tolerate substances more than others. It's kind of like the dude that smokes cigarettes their whole life and never gets sick, um, never gets cancer. And then another person who, who you know, um, gets cancer and smokes less cigarettes. So a lot of that is just genetic. But anything, almost anything is poisonous with enough dose. Think about water. Uh, water is probably the most benign thing you can think, think of. Yet you hear of marathon runners. It happens occasionally. It's rare. But you'll have a, a, a guy goes out and runs a marathon, is incredibly thirsty after he runs a marathon and just pounds down the water and then ends up having a heart attack and dying from an electrolyte imbalance. Um, you drink enough water, you will die. Uh, it will throw your electrolytes out of balance. You have a heart arrhythmia and then you fucking die. Um, so you can die from water. Now, the... The gap between the therapeutic dose and the toxic dose is pretty wide. You have to drink a shit ton of water or be in a very depleted state for water to kill you. I give you the PED example of, of um, DNP. With DNP, the gap between the therapeutic dose and the toxic dose is very, very narrow. There's little margin for error. So if you miscalculate your dose or if the drug is dosed improperly the margin between getting the most out of it and dying is very very slim um and i, I think this is why people think uh, you know get confused about uh, insulin you know they, they, they talk about insulin being the most dangerous drug in bodybuilding it's not so much that insulin is dangerous it's that dumbasses don't calculate what their uh what their carb intake is and, and, and adjust their insulin to their carb intake. So they end up taking, <laughs> taking a toxic dose of insulin, thinking that more is better. It's more is not better with, with, with insulin. More kills you. Um, you can get away with it with PEDs. When it comes to hormones, you can get away with it acutely because nobody falls over dead. Well, I, I guess it's possible, but I've never heard of anybody falling over dead from taking too much testosterone uh, at one time. Now, over the long term, chronically, yes, this is where we get into the duration um, and the dose. If you take a shit ton over a long period of time, you end up frying your organs and you die. So it's still poisonous. So duration matters here. Dose matters here. Um, compound choice matters here as well. Um, so we can see, you know, or something like testosterone, the gap between the the therapeutic dose and the toxic dose is very, very wide. 
Um, and also the duration of which you can take it is also extremely long. You can take a high dose of testosterone for a fairly long amount of time without doing significant amount of damage, but eventually that damage accumulates. It's the same thing with cigarettes. If you went out and smoked a cigar this weekend, you're not going to get lung cancer. It's very, 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 very unlikely that you're going to get lung cancer. If you smoked cigars every day for the rest of your life, you're going to get lung cancer. Uh, or you might get lung cancer. You're going to increase your chances of getting lung cancer. So I use alcohol as a simple example. This, this one seems to resonate with people and something that they can wrap their head around and understand. And with alcohol, you think about it with alcohol. We all, we, we all have been out. We, when we were younger, we did our, uh, when I was younger, you guys might still be young, but we did our partying. We would go out and we'd have uh, a few drinks. Uh, we'd go out, uh, you know, four or five beers and, you know, you're, you're feeling pretty good. Um, and you know, you're, you're nice and tipsy and, and having a good time. Uh, you get the Uber and you go back home and, but we all have that one buddy that doesn't have the four or five beers. He's drinking shots all night long and he's having as many as he possibly can until he's passed out on the floor and puking everywhere. He has reached a toxic dose. Now doing that one night, not going to kill you more than likely it could but it's extremely rare but doing that over year over year over year over year day after day after day will kill you now we're talking about compound choice here uh drinking wine versus drinking a hard liquor the hard liquor with the same dose a glass of hard liquor versus a glass of wine the, the hard liquor is going to cause way more damage than the glass of wine. You could probably drink a bottle of wine every day for, for many, many years and not cause any permanent damage or cause very little. You do that, you drink a bottle of liquor every day for many, many years, you're probably going to have liver failure or cirrhosis. You're going to have major organ damage. It's the same thing with, with uh, PEDs. So you think about it here. It, if you stick with the safer PEDs, you can run higher doses with less damage. The, the compound choice matters and the duration matters. Uh, um, so, so think about it here. If you ran a gram a week, let's just say for even math, you, let's, let's, let's say you ran 100 milligrams a day of Anadrol. Um, for a simple math on that, that's 700 milligrams of Anadrol a week. Um, and then you ran 700 milligrams of primabolin. One person, person A ran 700 milligrams of primabolin. Person B ran the Anadrol. Who do you think can run their substance longer? Who do you think is going to do more damage? The primabolin guy or the Anadrol guy? The Anadrol guy is going to do more damage and he's not going to last as long as the primabolin guy. Now in bodybuilding, being able to do this over a long period of time seems to be more important than, than blasting high doses for a short period of time. I get guys that tell me all the time, oh, you got to take five, 10 grams of gear to be a pro. Um, no, you don't. No, you don't. <laughs> First of all, you have to have the genetics to get there. But um, if you are able to sustain um, the, the dosages that are required to be a pro over an extended period of time, and you train hard and you eat and you, all the stars align, then, then, then you can become a pro. But the guys, the guys that pound the heavy dosages, you can see it. They don't live. They end up having major health problems. Guys like Dallas McCarver uh, would, would be an example. Nasser from back in the 90s, he was known to run high dosages, like crazy high doses. What I consider crazy, I think, you know, I heard five grams. But dose matters. Duration matters. Compound choice matters. Think about it in women too. Women can could even run testosterone in short 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 bursts and and low doses and not turn themselves into a man. But if they ran a low dose of testosterone long enough, they're going to start to masculinize themselves. If they run a high dose of testosterone for a shorter duration, they're going to cause masculinization. So dose duration compound choice and your genetic individuality intolerance to that substance are what matters so guys 
the, the lesson we can learn here from this is compound choice, choose safer compounds, run reasonable doses of those safer compounds, and, and, and consider the duration of which you run them. Uh, so you, you run lower doses, you can run, you, you run moderate doses, you can run them much longer. You run high doses, you can't run them that long. You run high doses of toxic compounds, you have an even shorter runway to run them. So I, I ask you over a five-year period of time, who's going to get the more gain, the most gains? The guy who runs a moderate amount of something like primabolin and testosterone or the dude that's blasting super toxic shit, um, but only can do it in short bursts. The the guy who's running the the super toxic shit, you know, trend, um, anadrol, shit like that, you know, uh, DNP, whatever. If he's running short bursts of these things, and then he has to take long breaks because he's fucked himself up, and then he goes back on, he's going to be on the yo yo. Who do you think is making the most gains over the over a five year period of time? I, I, I'm voting for the guy who runs moderate doses of safer compounds. I think the results would he would yield would be better. He's going to have better health outcomes. He's going to have better gains over the long period of time. Um, uh, I, I just I just think you're going to yield better results going that route than you would with with the toxic compounds at high doses. All right, guys, ho hopefully this is helpful. I, I, I'm, I'm rambling right now, but uh, to me, this shit's just obvious. I don't know why it, it, it seems to just fly over most people's heads. You're running moderate doses of, mo of mild compounds over a longer period of time. I, I am confident will yield better results than running high doses of toxic compounds over shorter periods of time. I, I'm, I'm, I'm certain of it. Uh, anyway, guys, I, I'm not saying that's what you should do. You do you. You you can consult with your medical professional. Um, but at the end of the day, this is just my kind of my thoughts on it. Take care.